It was a great season for Colorado State, and Kevin, if it's possible, it looks like this season's going to be even better, because correct me if I'm wrong, they got everybody back. Yeah, this team is loaded. I believe it's their top seven scorers return. Really, the only person not coming back is P.J. Bird. The bulk of the team, the scoring, the production, the the everything, the leadership is all back. And, and yeah, they now have a ton of experience together. They went, you know, last year, I think they were 313th in the experience rankings. And now it's going to be, be way up there. Uh, you know, Mike, I'll give you credit. A year ago when we talked, you, you were on top of this. You were probably yeah. the first person nationally to say, hey, watch out for this Colorado State team. You know, you know, we had seen it building here locally, but nationally, I don't think that had happened. And you called it, and now they're kind of a trendy mid-major pick. You know, they're one of the several teams that, you know, they're in a lot of the preseason top 25 and all that type of stuff. Um, so, yeah, you you were right on it, and it's trending the way uh, you thought it would and uh, the way that everyone here certainly expected and had been hoping for. Let's go player by player. David Roddy, first team all Mountain West. He's listed at 6'5". He's probably smaller than that just a tremendous force inside he battles and guards the opposing bigs he stays out of foul trouble uses his body well gets rebounds which is really essential because if you're going to look for a weakness in colorado state it's going to be on the boards but roddy means so much to this team you you have to start the conversation with colorado state with david roddy he's you know medved calls him the most unique player he's ever coached you can't list him is he a guard is he a forward he doesn't he's positionless he's He's very weird. They'll play him at the five. They can play him almost as a point forward if they want. You know, he's very aggressive. He, he's good at getting to the rim. His three-point shooting, his in percentage wasn't great. He ended at 28%. But most of the season, honestly, he was shooting in the uh, about 34% from three, With which with everything else he does, if he's doing that, um, good luck guarding that guy. As you said, great rebounder. And honestly, he still can improve a lot. He's still, you know, there's only two years in of being fully committed to basketball because in high school he was a uh, state champion in discus and shot foot. And he was a quarterback with Division One offers, uh, including uh, CSU's rival, Wyoming. So he's a guy that, you know, just a, an amazing athlete. And he's one, I think, if CSU has the season that, you know, most of us think they will, I think he's going to become one of those sort of kind of cult hero guys you know that you know the mid-major guy that maybe you know isn't all over espn or whatever but you, college basketball junkies are just going to adore him you know as csu continues to step forward i mean the guy is just a double double machine he ended the regular season three straight double doubles and these are not cheap either 22 and 12 12 and 14 20 and 10 then in the tournament he had 12 and 10 uh, in the loss to utah state then he goes in the NIT, goes 16 and 11. So just a, a critical piece. And it's not all they have. I mean, Isaiah Stevens was second team all Mountain West last year. Kendall Moore, of course. Thistlewood was honorable mention. It's just a dangerous group. As Stevens was freshman of the year, I believe, as, as, as a freshman in the yeah. conference. Uh, but this team balanced across the board. Yeah, I mean, Stevens is a guy that because of Roddy's emergence, you maybe hear less about him. But he, I mean, he's just a baller. He is what you want in a point guard, just smart, savvy. Uh, he's great at getting to the rim, a great shooter. Uh, he's one of those, again, he'll he'll fit whatever the game needs. You know, if he needs to just dish out a bunch of assists, he's happy to score four points and have 14 assists, that type of guy. And he really runs the show. He's, he's probably the, you know, leader in the clubhouse, so to speak, in a lot of ways. Uh, and then Moore and Thistlewood, they're really the veterans. They were the first uh, signees of Medved as he came to CSU. Kendall Moore is just a pain to play against. He's a little bulldog, great defensive guy. And Thistlewood's just kind of your knock him down shooter who has really improved his overall game. I think he came in as a just shooter, and now he can do a lot of things. But their depth is going to be really, really good. Yeah, well, let's get into those transfers now. And I guess the key would be the Division II All-American Chandler Jacobs. 6'3", can do it all. I'm going to project him to come off the bench probably, but that's going to give them a lot of strength coming off that bench. The guy is talented, division, like I said, Division II All-American, and the recruits coming in, I would think the transfers coming in, going to add to this team, make them even stronger. Yeah, Chandler Jacobs is a, a huge gift for CSU. He's a guy that early in the offseason, you know, some of my, my sources had said, you know, hey, watch out, CSU. We're, you know, they're really on him. They think they have a good chance. And, and obviously, uh, he liked them, but then he committed to Texas Tech. You go, oh, man, like, 
at CSU is buying Texas Tech for transfer. That that certainly means something. Uh, and then with some of the changes that Tech, uh, that spot kind of disappeared on him, ended up back at CSU. And, and yeah, I'm very intrigued. The lineup question is fascinating. I I do kind of feel the same way. He's probably come off the bench, but he's a guy that can really score it, uh, can really defend as well. And um, Chandler Jacobs, I think that's a huge get, a uh, one-year guy for CSU. And I'm really excited to see how he fits in and, and can really help them because I think that was a spot where every now and then, you know, if Roddy and or Stevens were struggling, they had guys that could score, certainly, but they were all very young. Um, and so now just having an experienced guy like that uh, is really going to be huge. And, and it's just going to be hard to figure out where to stop this team if you're a, an opposing coach. Um, you know, there are only so many things you can do. They were, Kevin, the best offensive team by Ken Palm within the Mountain West. Number one in adjusted offensive efficiency, effective field goal percentage, two-point percentage within conference play, almost 60%, and they made their free throws. Talk about Medved's offensive system, the spread, how he learned it, because it looks like this team is really taking hold of the way the game is trending, and they are just going to spread you out. They can all shoot. They can attack off the dribble, and Roddy is the centerpiece inside who who can really pass as well. Yeah, it, it's fascinating to me because as you mentioned their efficiency numbers are are pretty off the charts you know they felt like they struggled through lots of last season and their offensive numbers were still really good a lot of motion a lot of that they want to play at pace you know i think chandler jacobs addition will will increase they the more and that's where roddy comes in and he's a dude if he's grabbing 10 rebounds he's starting fast breaks on a bunch of those because he can go end in or as you say he can he can kick it out to someone for a wide open three so i expect their offensive uh, numbers to even go up this year with some of their additions and just some of the experience. So, so yeah, it's it's one of those where Medved has really molded, you know, some of his traditional thoughts and everything to a guy like David Roddy, who's so unique, and a point guard like Isaiah Stevens, who's so steady. So, so yeah, I expect the offensive numbers to just improve even and the offensive numbers are elite. And the biggest improvement has come on defense in his three years there. Colorado State has gone from 261st overall in adjusted defensive efficiency to last year they were 72nd, and within conference play, they were fourth, including, which I think is so critical, Kevin, in today's game, defending the arc. They held opponents in Mount West play to just 31% from deep. That's first overall in the conference. Talk about their defensive changes because defense a lot of times goes with continuity. They were solid last year, which means this year they could be even better. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, obviously it's a bit of a coach cliche or completely a coach cliche, but the focus on defense first, I Medved will talk till he's blue in the face about we're going to score. The offense will come. I want us locked in defensively. And yeah, I, you saw the buy-in last year. I think uh, the year before, it, you know, it was a little up and down. It'd be times it'd be good, times it wouldn't be great. But last year you saw just a lot more commitment to it. And again, that's led by a guy like David Roddy. When he's putting in the effort he does defensively, and especially the guys know, I mean, they, they see him, you know, 6'4 guy, how many times is he battling, you know, Namish Keita and, and some like that. So if you, you see him doing that and still produce on offense, you know, it's, it's hard for you to, to not put in your effort defensively. You know, they're really good at, at flying out at shooters, things like that. Um, so, yeah, they seem bought in. And as you say, with the continuity, uh, I don't see a reason they shouldn't be able to continue that. You have all the same guys that did it last year, so why wouldn't they be able to do it again? And, again, you know, even a simple thing like Grant Sherfield shot to beat them against Nevada, I think that's one that kind of sticks in their craw. Of like, man, get one more stop, we win a game, and maybe go to the tournament. So, so yeah, I think they know that they're going to score. And if they're – obviously, you don't need to be number one in the nation defensively or anything. But if you're if you're in the top three in the Mountain West uh, defensively, you're probably going to the NCAA tournament.